Hello my buddies, welcome to ABV video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Today I'll be reviewing the Netgear Orbi AX5400 mesh system after using it for over one month. This feedback is from my personal use, so my thoughts may be different from yours. All links will be in the description box below along with timestamps so you can skip to the sections you want. Let's start out with the environment this setup is in. Our home is 2,264 square feet with a secondary family room on the second floor. There are about 15 total devices online at once with probably three devices streaming all at once. We bought the Netgear Orbi AX5400 three pack from Costco for $449 US dollars and 99 cents because there was a $100 off at the time and it advertises that it can support up to 75 devices and can cover up to 7,500 square feet. So the specs check off our requirements. This three pack comes with one router unit, two satellite units with three gigabit ethernet ports on the back of the main router and two on each of the satellite units. This review is going to be split into four parts. First one is ease of setup. Second is the Orbi app. Third is connectivity, which includes speed, consistency, and coverage. And fourth is going to be my overall thoughts. Let's start with the setup. If you haven't seen my unboxing and setup video, I'll include it below. Anyway, the setup wasn't as smooth as the TP-Link Deco AX5300. I don't like how during the setup, I got prompted for anywhere access during the detecting product step before the home network completes its setup. And of course, it didn't work. I hadn't even finished setting up the Wi-Fi yet. So how can it connect without any connectivity? I guess it could have connected it locally. Regardless, it didn't work any time I tried it before completing the setup. It doesn't make any sense. Although there was another option which says trouble connecting, try a new system setup, which I had to use, but well, I wasn't going to select that as the first option while it's detecting the product because I wasn't having trouble connecting yet. Anyway, I'm sorry that I keep comparing my mesh system setup back to the TP-Link Deco. It's just that I haven't seen a simpler and quicker setup like it, which is quite unfortunate from a consumer standpoint since Netgear is supposed to be a quality brand. <sighs> I didn't think that I would need to talk about the app because there's normally nothing to say about it. It just works. However, to put it bluntly, the Orbi app is a bit annoying. Not just with the Access Anywhere screen during setup, but also after the setup. There were a few times when I'm not at home and tried to access the Orbi app remotely. It told me that I cannot log on. I kept getting log on time now, please try again. If this issue persists, try rebooting your device. I don't think that app is tied to the device physically, unless it's referring to rebooting my cell phone. So I'm not exactly sure what it means. And I know my Orbi units were on because I was able to access my home devices. Based on Netgear, the Anywhere Access feature enables you to use the Orbi app to manage your Orbi Wi-Fi router setting from anywhere with your Android or iOS device. So it means that you can log into your Orbi dashboard from anywhere using the Orbi app without having to be connected to the local network or be near the Orbi device. Regardless, I tried several times and gave up, but once I got home, I was able to open the Orbi app with no problem probably because it saw that I was on the local network. Anyway, I don't remember having this issue with the app for the TP-Link Deco or the Google Wi-Fi Pro though. Hmm. If anyone knows, please share with me in the comment section below. Just find it strange that the second part of the error message states, if this issue persists, try rebooting your device. Which device? The Orbi or my cell phone? We strictly use Wi-Fi and have not used the wired backhaul because our house is currently not capable. Netgear states that the Orbi AX5400 uses the Wi-Fi 6 standard with tri-band capability, so it supports 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz-1 for the lower channel, and 5 GHz-2 for the upper channels. Wi-Fi 6 is backward compatible with earlier Wi-Fi standards, unlike Wi-Fi 6E, which does not. And I can walk anywhere around my home and not have any issues. Also, with the mesh Wi-Fi system, I no longer have four SSID, two for the main router because of the dual band 2.4 and 5 GHz, 
and two more for the extender, totaling four. Speed has been good for the past month when it's consistent. Unfortunately, there's no fiber in my area, so I have to make do with cable. As for the consistency, it's been stable for the majority of the time. And I say majority because there was one night where it crapped out on us, and the reason was due to the Orbi needing a firmware update. That night, the internet was all of a sudden running at a snail speed at about 20 MBS. I rebooted the main router and modem, and that didn't fix the problem. I checked the Orbi app and noticed the firmware update notification. So I ran through that. When the update was done, I rebooted the main router and modem again, still was not fixed. I was annoyed by this time because it was about 9 p.m. I decided to reboot the modem or be main router and all the satellite units. Took them about five to 10 minutes for everything to come back up and everything was back to normal. Doesn't seem normal if you ask me if I have to reboot it that many times. If this is normal for Netgear, then maybe Netgear is not for us. Overall, the Netgear Orbi AX5400 is not MATIC compatible. It does come with one year of Netgear Armor Advanced Cyber Security, which is great. Now, I'm not going to read off all of the features that Netgear Armor offers, but I'll include a link to it for you to check out. However, some noteworthy ones are device detection and management. It allows you to manage or block devices that connect or attempt to connect to your network. Threat blocked. Blocks viruses, spyware, ransomware, malicious links, and other online threats before they reach your network. Instant alerts. Notifies you when a threat is detected or blocked. And web protection. Alerts you and blocked access to malicious and potential harmful websites. Cool, right? But do you know what's not cool? Well, it's when Netgear Armor is disabled but there's still traffic going to Bitdefender.net. And Bitdefender is the power behind Netgear Armor. Does this sound familiar to anyone? If you've seen my TP-Link Deco AX5300 video, the review, then you know what I'm talking about. This time, I tested it further. Thanks to a lot of the commenters for the suggestions and questions from that video. Thanks so much, guys. We're all learning together here. Okay, back to the topic. Here are my tests and their results. First, I enable NextDNS to see the traffic as it is to get the raw data from a controlled environment for 24 hours before any changes. I was getting a lot of traffic to Nimbus Bitdefender.net and no, we're not talking about Harry Potter and Nimbus 2000. Push.bitdefender.net. This was normal since I had Netgear Armor enabled. Then the next day, I disabled Netgear Armor and checked the outgoing traffic from NextDNS after 24 hours again, and it was blocked. How I know that it's blocked is because when it's not blocked, it's saying the connection is reset. And when it's blocked with NextDNS, it says unable to connect. I also tried with a domain like facebook.com and it also presents unable to connect when it's enabled on deny list. And here is a red vertical line as an indicator that the site was blocked from access from the logs. Now, if you don't have NextDNS, you can try to block them with the Orbi login portal. At first, I thought that it didn't work since NextDNS is still showing traffic to bitdefender.net. However, it seems like it's working because I get website blocked by Netgear Firewall when trying to access nimbus.bitdefender.net and push.bitdefender.net manually using the web browser. It's worth noting that if you want to use the Orbi login portal to block HTTPS URLs though, then it may not work because I was testing with facebook.com again and it didn't work for me. It seems to be a known issue with Orbi based on the Netgear community forum. I'll include a link to it below so you can check that out later. Unfortunately, all features on NextDNS, i.e. logs, deny lists, and etc. is only free for if your queries are under 300,000 per month. Because the Orbi pings to netgear.com so often, our queries went over the 300,000 queries. And deny list was no longer working, so we changed to using OpenDNS Home not the VIP home version, which is 100% free without a max query count. So I'm going to block bitdefender.net on both OpenDNS and Orbi login 
because I'm paranoid that way. And I tried to reach out to Netgear support to ask about this. Let's just say the support wasn't of any help. For you guys, and my own knowledge, I honestly tried to get an answer from the source. And do you know what else that Orbi was trying to contact besides Bitdefender? It's netgear.com. It does this every minute. And the reason why, based on the support person, after several attempts, is that Orbi is calling home for a DNS check. It's normally the ISP that does the DNS check. I know a router can do that, but it doesn't have to. And the thing is, I didn't see this for the TP-Link Deco when I briefly had it. And I cannot disable this DNS check based on the support person. Netgear, here are some of my suggestions. First, if your customer disable Netgear Armor, it means that they don't want to use it. So please don't send traffic to bitdefender.net if they disable it. I don't know what you are sending to your security suite when I purposely opted out. Second, there's no need for Orbi to reach out to netgear.com for a DNS check, congesting the traffic when the ISP can handle that. So please stop or at least reduce it by every hour or something because every minute just doesn't make any sense. Lastly, please train your support team better if you're going to hire someone without any technical background or have the person escalate to the next tier if the question is beyond their understanding. Thank you. The question you all want to know is would I recommend this product? Oh no, of course not. Why would I? I mean, it may work well for you, which is great because everyone's situation is different, but it's just not for me based on my personal experience. The setup wasn't a total breeze. The firmware update issue on that one night wasn't pleasant and it has the same security issue as the TP-Link Deco AXE 5300. I think the Deco hands down tops this Netgear Orbi AX5400 with ease of setup, stable connectivity, and later technology with the Wi-Fi 6E standard. And this Orbi was not even cheap. <sighs> That's just that. Anyway, I hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you again for watching and have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye.